Joyful blessings. This is Kaylin Castell with a video on the sky mysteries and the extra super rare Jupiter Saturn conjunction that is happening on December solstice 2020. The effects are lasting through 2021, as we will see. And we'll be looking at why it's so special and spectacular. So many reasons. It's beyond mind blowing. So just want to share that. Um, uh, just that reminder that every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn come together. And this is known by astronomers and astrologers as the Great Conjunction. Uh, we've got an extra special event happening this year because, of course, it's happening at the December solstice. And what we're looking at are the two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, who are the furthest from the Earth that we can actually see with the naked eye. And they're going to look so close together that they might look like one star. And we'll be uh, pondering how this might be considered the star of Bethlehem, as many are looking at it right now. But also the fact that it's happening on the December solstice with the December solstice sun on the galactic cross that I'll share and show more visuals about in just a moment. And that Jupiter and Saturn are in Aquarius together, exact, for the first time in 615 years. So rare, uh, that's also rare. The, um, the last time Jupiter and Saturn came together was in May of 2000. They were in Taurus. And of course, they were too close to the sun to really be seen. So this is the closest visible conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in 800 years. They're going to literally be within a tenth of a degree with each other. Um, some are saying that that is like one fifth of a full moon diameter. And so they may look, as you can see in this star map from Sky and Telescope, that they look like one star together. So they, they're going to most likely appear as a single star in the sky. And they won't be this close again until March 15th of 2080. And that will also happen in Aquarius, if any of us are still around <laughs> to see that, uh, 60 years from now. So uh, I'd be like 124. Um, anyway, uh, so I may be here to see that. I don't know, but I really am excited to see this one happening on the December solstice of 2020. Um, in the grand finale of this amazingly complicated year, 2020. Uh, so one of the things to just be uh, conscious of are when planets are in Aquarius, and I shared this in the videos on the separate video I did of Saturn in Aquarius and the separate video I did on Jupiter in Aquarius. Um, this is kind of a little summary of that, but I went into a lot more detail about each of them. So if you'd like to go and check those out, if you haven't seen them yet, they'll be in the show notes. I'll put the links to those videos in the show notes. So um, planets in Aquarius value total freedom based in universal love. So this is not about having freedom at the expense of others. This is about having the freedom to be wholly who you are in the most cosmic divine way possible. It also values freedom or values thinking beyond the status quo or outside the box of our current reality, whatever the cultural conditioning is, uh, loves questioning what is and having the right to choose your own evolutionary path as long as it does no harm to life or to the planet. Uh, so also Aquarius loves innovation, um, doing things in a new way, being um, on the cutting edge of new ideas and new discoveries, um, also revolutionary ideas and actions that help promote evolutionary growth. So it's that, that sense of freedom through all of those things. Now, of course, um, Aquarius also has a shadow. So planets in Aquarius will sometimes express, express from the more shadow side. There's that light polarized perspective. Oh, everything's just fine. There is no shadow. It's all good. It's all unfolding as it should. It's all in divine order. Whatever those thoughts might be, even though things may be um, disintegrating all around us. And in, the, in a one perspective, that is actually true, even if things are um, crumbling, that it's probably needed in order for something new to come in. However, uh, sometimes it needs attention and not to just have that detached perspective. So the power of love can also be co-opted by the love of power from an um, Aquarian perspective. And then that means that, that there can be a restricting of freedom of others to gain a sense of more personal freedom, not realizing what is being done to others. If you're doing something to others, you're also doing it to yourself. 
And so, um, you know, because Aquarius can be so detached, it doesn't necessarily have any sense of what that's about. And we've been seeing a lot of that happen on the planet from that detached place um, for a long time, really. So what's happening is on December 16th or 17th, depending on your time zone. So it's at 1021 PM Pacific time. Um, Jupiter is going in, or Saturn is going into Aquarius, as you can see here, Jupiter and the moon are pretty much exactly conjunct. Um, the moon is below the two of them at this, uh, at the time that uh, Saturn actually re-enters Aquarius. It was in Aquarius earlier in March of 2020 and then went back into Capricorn for a time. So that's the entrance of Saturn into Aquarius. And then we have the entrance of Jupiter into Aquarius on December 19th for the first time in 12 years. And, and Saturn uh, goes into Aquarius every 30 years. It already went in and is coming back in again this year at the end of this year. So what we can see here is that Saturn and Jupiter are in the sign of Aquarius zero Aquarius right here, but they're below the constellation of the goatfish, also called Capricornus or Capricorn. So this is partly why signs and constellations are not the same. And we can really see that here in this um, image. So here's Jupiter and Saturn together. This is the goatfish or Capricornus and above it is the water bear. And then on the day of December 21st, at the time of the December solstice, the moon will be at its first quarter phase above the whole lot of this. Now, one of the things that's really unique about shamanic astrology is that we're looking at the constellations as the um, backdrop that the seasonal signs move through. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about that in a moment, but just really keep an eye on this, or just notice this piece that Jupiter and Saturn are not in the constellation also called Aquarius. They're not even in the constellation called Capricorn. They are, and we're using the opposite names here so that it's easier to get the difference that the star patterns are one energy and the seasonal signs are another energy. What's happening on the December solstice, 20, uh, December 20, one is that Mars 23 Aries is square Capricorn at 23, um, 23 Capricorn, Pluto at 23 Capricorn, adding additional energy of the dissolution of what needs to go. And so that we can bring in something new so that Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius here can bring in the new um, energy. So the, we, we need to uh, dissolve the old structures, tear down the old structures so the new structures can come in. So it kind of feels like these things are working together. Now, this is showing where the December solstice sun rises. And you can't see this in the sky at the December solstice. You can see it in the sky at the opposite season of the year. Um, you can see these constellations and where the sun is at that time. But it, when the sun is here, you can't see it. So um, basically what you're seeing is this blue line is the plane of our galaxy and the green line is the plane of our solar system and they form a cross in the sky. And this is where um, the December solstice sun rises. Now, zero Capricorn is the December solstice. When the sun reaches zero Capricorn, it's the December solstice. This is agreed upon by astronomers and astrologers. And so it's a seasonal point, meaning we are at the shortest day and the longest night in the Northern hemisphere and the opposite is happening in the Southern hemisphere. But when the sun reaches this point, it happens to be on what's called the galactic cross right above galactic center. And so every December solstice, at least from 1962 to 2034 is on the galactic cross. And at the solstices, the sun rises in the same place for three days. So we could say the sun is on the cross for three days. That might remind us of another story, the sun on the cross. And so, um, but what's happening on December solstice uh, 2020 is that Jupiter and Saturn, and there, I'm showing the two planets inside the star right here, um, are going to be really close together. And you can see that here's, this is the constellation of the archer. And this um, conjunction is happening kind of it above the, um, we could say the behind of the, of the archer of the, um, of the centaur is how it's being depicted here. The goatfish is, um, or the Capricornus is here. And then away off, off to the side would be um, 
the, the sign, the uh, constellation of the water bearer. And so we're seeing that Jupiter and Saturn aren't in the constellation known as Aquarius, they're in the constellation known as the Archer, sometimes also called Sagittarius. But again, that's why there's so much confusion around the difference between signs and constellations. They're named the same name and it's time to uh, really create a deeper understanding so that we, uh, you know, here at the turning of the ages, the turning of an entire 26,000 year cycle, because again, it will be 26,000 years before the sun gets back to this point, moving one degree every 72 years, precessing backwards through the constellations. And so we're in this unique and remarkable time anyway. And then you add the Jupiter Saturn nearly touching conjunction uh, to this time on the December solstice. So it is the new year point of a solar year. It's the new year point of a galactic year. And we could say there's at least 72 new year points of a galactic year from 1962 to 2034. Um, so, each new, so each December solstice is important, but it's magnified by the importance of Jupiter and Saturn also here at this time. So it's very exciting time for us to be aware of. In addition to that, there are many that are saying, is this the star of Bethlehem returning? There are many that are saying that it is the star of Bethlehem returning. So um, some astronomers really do see that, that there was a Jupiter-Saturn conjunction that occurred three times in 7 BC. Now this literally did happen and they, see, they think that that was the star of Bethlehem. It happened on May 30th at 21 Pisces, again on October 7th at 16 Pisces and then December 5th at 15 Pisces. And there are other researchers that feel that it was the triple conjunction of Venus and Jupiter that occurred in 3 BC on August 11th at 25 Cancer and then in 2 BC on June 18th and August 24th with the June 18th conjunction being a mutual occultation, meaning that one planet covered the other. So it's similar to an eclipse energy. And also because Jupiter and, and uh, Venus are the brightest planets, it would have been very stunning to see in the evening sky. And so they many feel that that was the star of Bethlehem that was being um, talked about at that time. But um, regardless of whether that was what, which one it was, what we're gonna see is Jupiter and Saturn super close they're going to be stunning to see it in the evening sky and um, it's going to be visible. So sometimes these come together and they're not visible. And so um, it's also going to be on the galactic cross. So again, it'll be 26,000 years before maybe we have this kind of a Jupiter Saturn conjunction on the December solstice on the galactic cross. It's very rare because it could happen again at some point, but by then the zero Capricorn point will no longer, it's moving one degree every 72 years. So if it happens in hundreds of years from now, it will no longer be on the galactic cross. So this is so big, it's so amazing. Now, again, as I said, every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn come together. Um, they're gonna, they're currently coming together in air signs. This is the first time in Aquarius in 615 years. Um, but from 1980 to 2199, is the um, air, we could say cycle when it started with Libra, then it did briefly dip into Taurus. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, Aquari the Aquarius conjunctions will happen every 60 years. So it'll be 2080 when we have the next one. And then um, uh, it's gonna show up four times every 60 years. And then Gemini and Libra are gonna show up three times over this 219 year period. And also just so you know that there were three conjunctions in Libra in 1980 and 81. So we're gonna start with this look at what um, happened back in 1186, Jupiter made a conjunction with Saturn in Libra and then it dipped into Taurus and then it went into Aquarius on March 4th, 1226. Uh, and there were four conjunctions in Aquarius and only three in Gemini and three in um, Libra, uh, but one would happen twice in 1306. So sometimes it will do that, but there were only three different times it happened in, um, at, a, at, a, at a time. Now we're gonna see what's happening now. So in 1980 to 81, we had three conjunctions of Jupiter and Saturn in Libra. 
And in 2000, it dipped back into Taurus. And now in 2021, on December 21st, or December solstice, we're going to have Jupiter and Saturn at zero Aquarius. Um, and then it'll make four conjunctions in um, Aquarius before it shifts into the next element. So this is pretty remarkable and really um, amazing for us to just see this pattern. And I may do another video more on the pattern. Something else for us to know is that this um, Jupiter is Saturn conjunction and then Jupiter will square Uranus on January 17th, 2021. And Saturn will square Uranus on February 17th, June 14th and December 24th. And this is really revolutionary change agent energy. When we look at Uranus, it's so similar to Aquarius. So this is gonna further fuel additional unexpected events all through 2021. And it reminds us of the importance of being willing to go with the flow and let go of resistance to change because radical revolutionary changes are going to happen whether we like it or not. And the more we resist, the more challenging those changes can be. So um, to keep in mind that these changes really are designed to facilitate evolution and growth. And especially if we can just roll with them, flow with them, go with them in the best way possible. So with that, I just the power of questions. And so um, first of all, to remember that we're only limited by our thoughts, beliefs, and imagination. And when we can ask the right questions, the universe will always give us answers. So sometimes people ask questions like, what did I do wrong? And then the answers they get are all the things they did wrong. If they ask the question, what can I learn from this? Then they get all the answers based on what they can learn from it, much more positive. So these are questions that are designed to help us get answers that will be useful and helpful. So how can I be a living expression of the change I wish to see in the world? How can I love as much as possible in every moment, even in the most challenging times? How can I stay attuned to the high vibrational energy of love, no matter what is happening in my outer world? And what would it take to dismantle the old limiting structures and create new, innovative, expansive ones where we are all free to express what is ours to express, be what is ours to be, live what is ours to live. So these are just some examples of questions. I hope that you'll come up with your own questions that you would like and to place them in as positive a statement as possible. Um, or po a positive way of asking those questions because the universe will always answer our questions if we are sincerely asking questions. And, uh, and it doesn't matter what the questions are, it will answer them. <laughs> so, so we wanna be asking the best, most useful, helpful questions possible. So that concludes this look at the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction and the, and also square Uranus and all the amazing things that are happening at the December solstice into 2021. Um, there will be in-depth documents with tables and insights on my website. Um, and also there are special webinars at the Shamanic Astrology website on Saturn in um, square Uranus and also Jupiter and Aquarius. Uh, so you can go and check that out and links to the previous videos that I've done on Jupiter in Aquarius and Saturn in Aquarius will be in the show notes so that you can see that. And I will also post a video on the difference between signs and constellations. So um, I highly encourage you to uh, um, subscribe to my channel because then you'll get notified and hit the uh, bell for notifications so that you can get the notifications when new recordings are going up. And I also just um, send my deepest blessings and, uh, and intention that this timing is, this remarkable timing is one that we all work with to create the world that we would love to live in and feel supported by uh, and in the most innovative, creative ways possible.